Hello friends. <clears throat> I want to talk to you about the 8th chapter of the book of Romans this evening. I'm going to read the entire chapter. I think it's 29 verses, something like that. Every verse in the 8th chapter is packed with goodness. It is one of my, it is probably my favorite chapter of any book in the Bible. I have read it, I don't know how many times, probably 3,000 times, I don't know. I love it and I want to share it this evening. And this is the Apostle Paul. It says, There is therefore no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. Bam! We're not condemned if we walk after the Spirit and not the flesh. There's no condemnation to us. If Jesus Christ is our Lord and Savior, we are saved forever and ever through all eternity. And if you're not saved, you need to repent of your sins. You know you're a sinner. Every person born on planet Earth is a sinner. You can't get to heaven being a sinner. The only way you can get to heaven is through Jesus Christ, who was a sacrifice on Calvary, on the cross, for our sins. You've got to have faith that he is God, that he is the Savior believe that the Lord Jesus Christ uh, saved you from your sins and you will be saved. It's that simple. Talk to him. Tell him that you're sorry for the sins, your foolishness that you've been living. And it doesn't matter how many sins you got or how bad those sins are, God will forgive you if you truly repent and turn to him. Okay, let me start over here. There is therefore no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the Spirit. For the law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus hath made me free from the law of sin and death. Bam! For what the law could not do, and that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own Son, Jesus, in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin condemned sin in the flesh that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit or that for they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh but they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be kindly, carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, if so be that the Spirit of God dwells in you. Is the Spirit of God dwelling in you? Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. You've got to have the Spirit of Christ. You have to believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the Spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies 
by his spirit that dwelleth in you. And in case you don't know, it was God that raised Jesus up from the dead. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors not to the flesh to live after the flesh. For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. And it's not talking about here on earth. It's talking about eternal death in hell, burning in agony, worms eating on you. Your mind cannot fathom the hell you will experience in hell for all eternity, which has no end. You don't want to go there, friend. That's why I'm on YouTube trying to wake up two or three people so that they can be saved because my heart really hurts for those that are lost. And there are a lot of people out there professing to be a Christian who are no more Christian than the man in the moon because they're not bearing any fruits of the Spirit. And it's those people mostly that I'm talking to, but I'm talking to anybody who does not have Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. But the ones that I'm talking about that profess to be Christian but aren't, I talk to them because I was one of those people for 51 years. And I almost died in the accident that crippled me up. And if I had died... I would have been in hell for 20 years now, and that still makes me shake in my boots. For four or five days in a hospital, the doctors said I was not going to survive. I didn't have Jesus then. I didn't believe in Jesus then. And it, it, it's, it scares me, and I thank God, I thank God, I thank God, I thank God that he saved my life from that accident and then a few months later he saved my soul I just I just thank him I can't thank him enough because hell is not someplace me or anybody else would ever want to go to and hell is real Jesus preached about hell a lot Jesus is God he cannot lie <laughs> all right let me continue on here for if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die, and that's for all eternity. But if but you're not really dead. You you wishing you were was dead, but you're not. Never. But if ye live, but if ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, ye shall live. Mortify the deeds of your body today. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they or the sons of God. For ye have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but ye have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. We are adopted into God's family through Jesus Christ. You know, a lot of people have children that they birthed they didn't pick them they got what came out when you're adopted you are specially chosen by the family that adopted you God wants to adopt you he wants you in his family The Spirit itself beareth witness with their spirit that we are the children of God. And if children of God's, that means we are heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. Bam! How would you like that? You can have that. You can be an heir of God's and a joint heir with Jesus Christ. If so be that we suffer with him, that we also may be glorified together. And being a Christian, you're going to suffer. 
you're going to suffer and you're going to suffer. And like the last video I made and like other uh, people in the Bible, the, the last video I made was on Habakkuk, the prophet. And there are others in the Bible that also suffered. We are going to suffer, but it won't matter when we get to heaven everything all of this suffering on earth will be forgotten there will be no more suffering no more sickness no more heartache no more anything that's bad ever because we'll be in heaven rejoicing praising god thanking jesus okay let me continue on for i reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us <clears throat> <clears throat> For the earnest expectation of the creature waiteth for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who has subjected the same in hope. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption and to the glorious liberty of the children of God. For we know that the whole creation groaneth and travaileth in pain together until now, and we certainly do know that the whole world is in pain right now. The whole world is suffering right now. And that's what prophecy said would happen just before the rapture, just before the seven years of tribulation. We're there, folks. We're knocking on the door. That door's fixing to be opened. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the Spirit, even we ourselves grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to it, the redemption of our body. Bam. And that is something I anxiously await. I am so ready for that. For we are saved by hope, and that means faith. But hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for it? But if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience wait for it? Likewise, the Spirit also helpeth our infirmities, for we know not what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit itself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. And he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is in the mind of the Spirit, because he maketh intercession for the saints, that's us, the Christians, according to the will of God. Bam! There is so much good stuff in this chapter. And we know that all things, all things, it doesn't matter what it is, even if it looks like a bad thing, we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are the called according to his purpose. So everything that's happening today, you think it's not good, it's going to turn out good. God's going to be glorified. We're going to be saved. Everything's going to be all right. None of this surprises God. For whom he, speaking of God, for whom God did foreknow, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son, that he might be the firstborn among many brethren. <clears throat> Moreover, whom he did predestinate, them he also called, and whom he called, them he also justified, and whom he justified, them he also glorified. And we, the bride of Christ, the true Christians, are fixing to be glorified, pretty, doggone quick.
Nobody knows the day nor they are, but it's pretty quick, I guarantee you. I want you to be in that bunch. I really do. That's why I'm on here talking to you. So listen to the Holy Spirit speaking to you and respond to his voice. What shall we then say to these things? If God be for us, who can be against us? It seems like the government and the world is against us right now, but God is in control and he is over us, taking care of us, protecting us. Just put your faith, every drop of faith you have in God. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. He, speaking of God, that spared not his own son, Jesus, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather, that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. Christ died for us so that we can be saved and go to heaven. So yeah, he's going to intercede for us. And he sits right next to God in heaven. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Who? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or a sword? We're experiencing a lot of that right now. Can all of that separate us from the love of Christ? Romans 8, 36 says, As it is written, For thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Verse 37, Nay, in all these things we are more, more than conquerors through him, Jesus, that loved us. Verse 38, for I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord, bam, friends, the victory is ours. It's right here in God's holy word. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ today and be saved. To be saved, all you've got to do is admit to Jesus that you're a sinner. Ask Jesus to forgive you of your sins. He has already died for your sins. His blood is more than powerful enough to totally erase your sins so that when on judgment day, when God looks at you, he sees a holy person because Jesus has taken away your sins. If you go to Jesus today in faith, believing that Jesus is the Messiah, that he is the Christ, that he is the Savior of all the Christians. <coughs> Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and be saved. I want to see you, 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 and you in heaven. God bless you, friends.